Good morning everyone. I'm going to give a brief at the overview of UWA's data management services and how we got to the point where we are now. Before I do, I'd like to give you a snapshot of my personal journey in this field. I graduated from UWA and then from the University of New South Wales with a Bachelor of Science in Molecular Genetics about 17 years ago and I worked as a research scientist in neurodegenerative disorders for several years. And then when children came along, I decided to change scope a bit and I went back to study information sciences at ECU where when I graduated, I was offered a job here at UWA as their first research data librarian in 2011. Currently, I am research data coordinator. When I look back at my role as a researcher, apart from the typical laboratory work, there was there is some overlap with my current role. I've gone from doing the research and managing my own data to advising or training other researchers and librarians on uh, research data management theory and I also help in providing research data management systems to our community here at UWA. Now the University Library at UWA consists of six subject libraries and subject librarians and they provide a range of research learning support services. I work in the e-research support unit which is separate from the subject libraries but we work together to deliver the digital services to our researchers. Now the e-research support unit um, as a whole was created in 2010 with the appointment of a new director of what was then information services and the focus of this unit is digital developments in library including research impact, bibliometrics, open access, uh, we manage the UWA research repository for publications here, digitisation and the ANS projects as well as data management. This is the first step that UWA took to integrate research data management into the library. The next step were the ANS projects. Uh, UWA received ANS funding for these three projects, Seeding the Commons, the Metadata Stores project and the Data Capture project. And these projects resulted in data management systems and training materials as listed here. I will now quickly give a brief overview of the three ANS projects which we have now completed. Starting with the Seeding the Commons project, it involved the creation of at least 50 collections in, in the Australian Research Data Commons. With the ANS funding, UWA was able to hire its first research data librarian and um, I managed to manually enter these collections into RDA and through to the ANS registry. The other part of the project uh, consisted of creating training materials and data management guidelines which are now available in the form of a LibGuide titled Research Data Management Toolkit. The other two projects I'm going to speak in a combined mode because they do overlap. The metadata stores and the data capture projects required the delivery of a research data metadata store where records feed automatically into RDA in a RIF-CS format. UWA selected the DSpace software and customised it to meet our requirements and this is a screenshot of our metadata store. The project required feeds from three distinct faculties in order to, or organisational units, which were our pilot groups. And those pilot groups were Rockheart, the Oceans Institute, and the Centre for Microscopy. And as you can see on the left hand side, it's um, the number of communities has increased in size. And this is continually growing. growing particularly as many of our researchers are publishing in PLOS, which now has the data sharing policy and requires that a data availability statement is made, so authors are required to make all the underlying data and the findings described in their manuscript fully available without restriction. This is a recently uploaded example of a data set which is associated with a PLOS article and you can see that the files are publicly accessible complying with PLOS data sharing policy. So in a nutshell, these are the three ANS projects that um, helped catapult UWA into the research data management services area and we then needed to promote these ANS funded service, uh, services and also tools which we were developing for data storage initiatives. So we developed this year a suite of research data management services online aimed at helping researchers create a data management plan and understanding basic research data management concepts 
and we brought all these systems together in a web page. And this is a snapshot of our web page, our current web page. Uh, we've divided it into three sections referring to planning, storing and sharing. And our three data management services right now fit into these sections. Under planning, we link to the data management planning tool, which is an online tool that researchers can use. I'll just go over that briefly in a minute. Under storing, we link to the institutional research data store. The insert institutional research data store is a storage facility but specifically for researchers to store their research data. We also have the sharing system in which we link to the research data online tool, which I just showed you in the previous slide. There is also a link to the research data management toolkit and LibGuide. Our research data management tool uses the SurveyMonkey tool and it, it, it's a guide at the very least a useful checklist of issues that researchers should consider at the beginning of their research life cycle. We also have a copy in the toolkit for them to download in a hard copy. Obviously it's not compulsory that they fill out these forms, these online forms, but it's, there's, a, there's been significant interest at the university level and at some faculty um, levels as well in, in the school levels in standardising or getting a more consistent approach to research data management planning and incorporating it into the research data life cycle or the research life cycle, sorry. So I'm not sure if many of you are aware but or if an equivalent exists in the other states, but in Western Australia there's a legal instrument which exists now that determines the minimum retention period of all research records including data. This instrument is an, has an acronym of WAUSDA, we call it the WASDA here, and it overrides all the other guidelines and recommendations and in some case, it cases exceeds the recommended data retention times. So we have at the very bottom there an indication there that your research res records must be retained for a minimum of seven years after data publication or project completion, uh, whichever is later. Um, at the very top, you've got major research having to be held and retained permanently. These guidelines were created by members of our, our Information and Government, Governance Service team here at UWA, <coughs> uh, together with ECU and Curtin and this WASDA document is really the reason that we started developing the Institutional Research Data Store to comply with it. So the Institutional Research Data Store is a centralised and secure UWA supported data storage facility for electronic research data. It enables ongoing access to these valuable assets even after researchers leave or retire or move to other universities, keep it here and they can take a copy with them. This is the screenshot of the IRDS and the landing page and it has a, a range of online request forms for the service and our researchers can access those via their internal login credentials. It's no cost to the researcher so they can request a certain size of uh, space for their data. It's available 24-7 on campus via wired, wired access, so it's not Wi-Fi yet. It's secure and backed up. It's scalable to accommodate for future needs, so currently we have a limit of 2.5 petabytes. We're accommodating for the tail end of research. We're not focusing on big data. We have facilities where, where it's not accessible to anyone external to UWA. But this is flagged as a future enhancement to be able to collaborate with your immediate researchers who are involved in collecting this data interstate and internationally, but not, not yet. And also we we're looking at incorporating Wi-Fi access into the future. The IRDS had an enormous positive response from all the researchers who wished to use the service and we didn't anticipate this interest and we are really thrilled. The demand for the service has required both the library and IT together to review and manage capacity efficiently. So right now we are about to go into live launch, advertise it to everybody and I'm providing a number of different reports which monitor and gauge use. Um, this is a means of measuring the success of the service well into the future as well. Each request over a certain amount also requires a process between the librarians 
um, our faculty liaison coordinators contacting researchers prior to appro approval. So we also monitor if someone is requesting anything above five terabytes, that that is their immediate need. We, un we don't want to cater for projected needs, we're catering for immediate needs. And the researcher feedback has been extremely positive, which is great. I have covered all of the four research data management services and tools which we have. Uh, the research data management toolkit on the right hand side, the planning tool, the storage facility and research data online, uh, our metadata store which feeds into RDA. In regards to engagement, our research data management suite of services is now online and accessible to everyone. I've been presenting these services to school staff meetings and faculties. I find that the school staff meetings are much more receptive and uh, gain bigger crowds um, <laughs> because the faculty uh, meetings are usually over lunch times. We've also conducted research data management workshops for both librarians, faculty liaison coordinators and researchers and the faculty liaison coordinators are then fully equipped to liaise with researchers with their, with, which, which they encounter and provide information on our services. Researchers who were part of the pilot groups for the research data online and the IRDS have also promoted our services via word of mouth. So where to now? We have introduced services in which there's obviously a need for. Um, without broad announcements or a full live launch of our research data management services, the uptake has been significant and very positive. So it will be necessary to manage and maintain, improve and monitor these services through reporting. I believe the next step is to cement policies and procedures for our researchers to provide guidance on data management and the appropriateness of using these services in their research. These are currently in the pipeline. Training our librarians and uh, facu faculty liaison coordinators is essential in communicating a consistent message to our, of, our research, of, of our services to the researchers. This upskilling is ongoing and aims to provide reliable and uniform information which is then disseminated outwards.